David Axelrod, welcome. Thanks, Harry. Good to be with you. Almost every liberal commentator who I watch, who I read, who I know, has in this second term expressed some disappointment and frustration with Barack Obama's presidency. Does that bother you? No, you know, I think that part of uh, what you need to do when you're the President of the United States or when you work for the President of the United States is take a longer view. And, uh, you know, it's very hard to judge a presidency in the moment. Uh, I think this presidency is going to stand up well. And, uh, you know, I'm proud, I'm proud that he is a guy, in my experience, who is uh, not a perfect guy, and I'm very clear about that in my book, but, but a guy who's been willing to look uh, longer, look at the horizon, and not get too bogged down in the uh, contra Right, of the but moment. you write in the book that at one point the president told you, this whole cable thing wears you out. I wouldn't think if you're president of the United States you'd worry all mu that much about this whole cable thing. No, I th well, first of all, that was three months into his presidency, so I think everybody adjusts to the realities of the presidency. But there is, look, one of the one of the realities of the times in which we live in the, is that um, we have fierce competition uh, for eyeballs. Uh, all the st all the networks, all the stations, uh, and all kinds of other uh, media outlets competing for people's attention. And as a result, uh, there is sort of a mentality that treats every day in Washington as election day and uh, many, many events as the decisive events of a presidency. And uh, you have to learn to navigate through that and not chase every rabbit down the hole. Right, but speaking of which, you're now part of MSNBC and went on in your role as commentator. When you occasionally and mildly criticize the president, I, I feel like you're sort of holding back a bit that you are, in the words of your title, a believer. I am. Well, I, I, you know, the believer title of my book refers more than my relationship with one person. It has to do with my belief in this in this system, and I and I do believe in it. I, I you know, from the time I was a five year old boy and saw JFK, I, I've been in, in, in uh, you know, I've been focused on it, and I've been. Uh, but how you know, free do you feel? A believer in it. How free do you feel to criticize the president you work for? I feel free to criticize him, I, and I have criticized him, and when I do criticize him, you're right, it gets outs outsized attention because it's like a, a, Even a, a man Rod by says, dog story. Yeah. Exactly. All right, so let's, let's go to some exactly. points in the book. Uh, in 2008 campaign, you bring New York Times columnist Maureen Dowd on the plane to talk to mm -hmm. Barack Obama, and in your words, the president treats her, he is patronizing and disrespectful toward her. He doesn't seem to like press people all that much. Well, I mean, that was a. I, I'd never quite seen anything like that. And, and he reminded me, by the way, uh, he only read the book after it was in print. Uh, and he reminded me that uh, the thing that provoked him uh, was that. Uh, was a column that he thought was unfair to, to Michelle, his wife. But be that as it may, you know, uh, it, was a, it was an unusual exchange between the two of them, and I, I think defined their, their relationship uh, moving forward. In that OA campaign, your candidate got what I would say is the easiest ride from the press of anybody in modern political history. Hillary's people used to complain to me about it all the time. You would look back and can see that that's true, right? Well, I, I think we got we got pretty good treatment, not universally good treatment, uh, but we got good treatment. Uh, but it's it's also true that when you when your campaign is going well, when you're running a good campaign, when you're running a smart campaign, you tend to get better coverage than when you're not running a good campaign. And I always say to candidates that it's a loser's lament to spend a whole lot of time sitting around and, and brooding about the press coverage you get. Right. Uh, well, one it generally is a sign that there are other problems in the campaign. No, sure, sure. Now, one negative note in that campaign came with the remarks, the videos of uh, Obama's former pastor, Reverend Jeremiah Wright. Now, in the book, you say that those videos first began appearing on Fox with right-wing shock jock jo Sean Hannity and then went, quote, mainstream with Good Morning America. Are you saying that the anti-American uh, rantings of right w w weren't a legitimate story at first and were being pushed by Fox? No, I... No, no, they were clearly a le legitimate story, uh, but they uh, also were a, a boiled-down reel of, you know, decades of, uh, uh, of, of, uh, sermons by Reverend Wright, so they didn't 
kind of characterize the whole of his of his uh, of his life and statements. But I I never suggested that it wasn't a story. I knew it was a story, and um, you know the, what I wrote about there were the four days that ensued after that, which I think were you know very very significant days in that campaign, in which the campaign could have gone one way or another. Right. Uh, on this point, though, I can't help but notice that the president on the stump uh, seems with some regularity to take swipes at Fox News. Doesn't that just highlight the criticism? Well, maybe. I, I mean, I don't know. I wouldn't necessarily um, single out news organizations that way. Fox News, you know, has come, uh, at least some elements of it have come to represent the voice of the right on uh, cable TV, just as for some, you know, MSNBC has represented the voice uh, of the left. And that's one of the features of our modern uh, media is right. that uh, in the opinion program you know, people tend to sort themselves right. out ideolo uh, I I I ideologically and watch the programming that affirms their points of view right all right so 2008 campaign again uh, you write that the washington post shayla murray who now works for joe biden and newsweek's richard wolf became my constant companions on the road you confided in them you swore them to secrecy about a bad poll doesn't that kind of underscore the coziness of the campaign with the press corps well, it's kind of not. I never doubted that they and Richard has uh, written uh, things that were uh, challenging. I'm sure Shayla did too, though I I, I didn't monitor every word uh, she wrote. But it's a natural look. I don't. One of one of the things about me is that I started off as a journalist. I don't view journalists as adversaries. I understand what their jobs are. And when you're traveling with people uh, day after day after day, and you're having uh, conversations with them about the events of the day, you know you do develop relationships I don't think that that uh, impeached their professionalism or mine and uh, Howie you've been around a long time you've covered uh, you've covered probably covered campaigns uh, I've covered and, a lot you know, of campaigns that, that is that that is a natural uh, that's a natural thing again you know I wasn't suggesting my, anything unprofessional roles. I was talking about look there were some campaigns that get along well with the press and some that do not I was simply making that point let me move you to the 2012 yeah, campaign yeah but I bet even with, even even within e even within a campaign you know I, I had a different orientation perhaps than some others in the campaign and I had that orientation because I literally was raised in a newsroom at the Chicago Tribune I believe in journalism and I believe in the role of journalists and so uh, and and many Many of my closest friends today still are, uh, are journalists, some who, of whom I worked with when I was a reporter and others I've met over the, over the years. And so it, I may have a slightly different attitude right. about the media than uh, some of my colleagues. Right. 2012 campaign, that disastrous first debate between the president and Mitt Romney, yeah. uh, you write that MSNBC's Lawrence O'Donnell pulled you aside and said, you might want to get on our air, they're ripping your guy apart. Uh, MSNBC, kind of the go-to network for the Obama campaign and Obama White House? Well, obviously not that night. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, I, I, I joked that uh, I could... Uh, Chris Matthews, uh, I didn't need to watch TV to hear what Chris was saying because he was saying at such a decibel level uh, <laughs> that it could be heard all all around the globe. Uh, there was, you know, discount, they, they, because there was a, a sense, particularly among some of, of the folks who are opinion broadcasters, uh, that uh, he had let down in that debate. They were very vociferous, just as there was some criticism on Fox about Romney's performance in the last debate, where there was a sense that he wasn't as challenging as he should have been uh, on the part of some on the right who were, who were partisan in his favor. I've got to go in a minute, but as you mentioned, you know, you were a Chicago Tribune political reporter until you left for politics in 1984, and you described then being disillusioned with the direction of the newspaper business. Yeah, I really was. You know, I had a great experience in the first six years of my time at the Tribune. Great sort of front page journalism. A lot of old editors who uh, who really were enthusiastic about the story. And then the wall started caving in between the business side and the news side. The margins, the profit margins became much more of a focus. And there was a different atmosphere in the newsroom, a different set of editors. And uh, I ultimately left journalism in part because I didn't feel like I could do it uh, the way I wanted to, that I didn't feel the same freedom to go out and report that I had or the news hole that I thought was needed to do the reporting. Uh, so I kind of left journalism because I loved it so much I didn't want to do it another way. <laughs> and all that was before the Internet. David Atzerod, thanks very much for joining us. Thanks, Howie. Thanks for having me.